It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 1281, and I'm Dr. Neil Malik. Hey there, happy Friday, and welcome to another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I answer your health questions related to fitness, diet and nutrition, and lots more. You send in the questions, and I answer them for you. And a real quick thanks to Headspace. If people keep telling you to try meditation, and you're like, when? When would I have time? You should check out Headspace. Headspace is your daily dose of mindfulness in the form of guided meditations in an easy-to-use app. Or, need some help falling asleep? Headspace has wind-down sessions their members swear by. I've been using Headspace and have gone through different packs like appreciation, patience, and courses like dealing with regret. Every pack has allowed me to gain a deeper understanding of myself. And I love that I don't struggle with my commitment to meditation because Headspace makes it so easy to adjust the desired time spent on each session. It's been great for me, and I hope you can feel the same way too. You deserve to feel happier, and Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash OHD. That's headspace.com slash OHD for a free one-month trial with access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation. This is the best deal offered right now. Head to headspace.com slash OHD today. Now, if you want to know a bit more about me and my background and credentials, definitely check out an earlier Q&A episode from this month where I go into more details about that. But for now, I'm going to keep this intro nice and short. So let's hear today's question as we optimize your life. Today's question came via email. Jacqueline writes, how can I find and stick to a better eating plan knowing some of the things I eat are sabotaging my weight loss? I can't find the willpower to refuse the foods I shouldn't be eating, mainly too much almond butter, to see some positive results on the scale. I currently follow a vegan diet. Thank you so much for your question, Jacqueline. Willpower is something everyone struggles with. My own patients believe that my willpower is somehow stronger than theirs which is why they believe I don't struggle with insert their condition here. This is a false assumption. Oh, and when patients do tell me that they think my willpower is stronger than theirs, I never get defensive. This is because they have opened the door for me to level with them, just like I'm gonna do here. My willpower is no different from yours or anyone else's. Many find it hard to believe, but for the longest time, I had zero interest in performing most healthy habits. Even when I was eventually diagnosed with a chronic disease, I would take my medications, but I wouldn't do anything else to help improve myself. I didn't want to exercise. I didn't want to stop eating at Del Taco. I didn't want to meditate. Nothing. It wasn't until my medication dosages had to go up and I had to think about paying for my own health insurance that I started to slowly change my habits. And I repeat, this was a very slow process. And even then, I would have moments where my willpower would be completely gone. I would relapse into old habits. Why does this happen? Well, I will share with you what I've learned from experience along with what researchers have discovered. One, think of your future self. When it comes to finding the motivation to perform any behavior, begin with this thought. Do something today for which your future self will thank you. When it comes to gathering the strength to refusing foods that you may feel are sabotaging your progress, remind yourself that you are doing this for your future self. So even if you perform just one small behavior today that makes you feel better, that's a step in the right direction because tomorrow you may not feel the physical effects of that one small behavior right away, but you will mentally. You will begin to gather momentum and to quote Newton's first law of motion, an old cliche, An object in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. If you can repeat that one small behavior again within the near future, like saying no to a food that you find is holding you back, it will continue some of that momentum and likely help you feel a bit better about your situation. These little wins can be so important because it often leads to increased confidence, which can help motivate you to continue your progress and move on to bigger changes later. Two, have a backup plan for willpower. 
I gotta mention something about willpower. Far too often, we blame our lack of willpower for our inaction or our relapse, whatever it is. But the truth is, willpower comes and goes. Frankly, it's exhausting to rely on our willpower all the time. In fact, I probably have less willpower than you when it comes to pizza, french fries, and donuts, since those are my problem foods. Think of willpower like a muscle. Exercising it every so often is a good thing, but too often, and it leads to fatigue from overuse. Willpower operates this same way. Using it every now and then is good, but relying on it all the time will just lead to exhaustion and disappointment. This is often why the end of the day is often the most challenging time to try and eat more nutritious foods or say no to that problem food or fit in some time to exercise. We just spent an entire day using up that willpower muscle at work, dealing with colleagues, sitting in traffic, paying bills, dealing with family issues, and on and on. And then somehow, We expect we're gonna have enough willpower left to make a good decision when it comes to eating right or exercising. It's probably not gonna happen. That muscle is fatigued, it's spent. So we need a backup for our willpower. Tricks we can rely on when our willpower is just not there anymore. Which brings me to another famous saying and number three on my list. Quote, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Benjamin Franklin. One thing we can do to back up our willpower is to have a plan. The beauty of this is it takes out the guesswork and removes willpower from the equation. This plan doesn't need to be complicated. I talk about this more with my next tip, but researchers have repeatedly discovered that we are more likely to meet our goals when we have a plan. Even if you start small, it's gonna help. So you could decide that you will cut back on your almond butter consumption by one serving a day, or maybe it's half a serving every other day. It doesn't matter, just have a plan. Researchers are also discovering that if you write down your plan, write it down somewhere, anywhere, it tricks your brain into thinking it's real, which in turn makes it more likely to happen. I have made it a habit to write down even something as simple as my daily to-do list. Four, keep things simple. Keep the plan simple for now and consistency will follow. Complexity is the enemy of action. If a behavior is simple and convenient, consistency will almost always follow. So if that means you need to remove almond butter from the house temporarily, do so. And five, have patience. Habits take time to form. So why do we expect to be able to break our habits with the quick snap of our fingers? It just doesn't work that way. Again, consistency is key, but have patience with yourself. Understand, you may not see the results you're looking for right away, but that doesn't mean good things aren't still happening. You can't see how the neurons in your brain are beginning to change as you begin this journey. You can't see that by cutting back on just one serving of almond butter, you've reduced the number of calories floating around in your bloodstream, which in turn may make fat cells near your abdomen shrink. These are things that are happening on a microscopic level that you may not realize are happening. But if you stay consistent and have patience with yourself, eventually you will feel and see those wonderful effects. I wish you all the best, Jacqueline. And thank you to Netgear. Is your Wi-Fi struggling to keep up with your streaming, work, gaming, video calling, and more? What about all at once? When you're connected to your world by Wi-Fi, be sure it's the best. Bring your Wi-Fi up to speed with Orbi Wi-Fi 6 from Netgear. Orbi Wi-Fi 6 is the best and latest in Wi-Fi. It covers your entire home with unmatched speeds and performance for uninterrupted working and learning, video calling, and streaming at home on more devices than ever before in any part of the house. With Wi-Fi this advanced, you're gonna want it everywhere. Ready for the best Wi-Fi ever? Find out what makes Netgear America's number one choice for Wi-Fi at netgear.com slash best Wi-Fi. That's netgear.com slash best Wi-Fi. And I have that linked in this episode's description. And thank you again so much for the question. And if you want your question answered right here on the show, send one in. You can email one to health at oldpodcast.com or if you want your voice played on the show, come by oldpodcast.com slash ask. Right on that page, you can record straight from your computer's microphone 
It's really easy and you can even play back your message and do retakes before sending it in. Or you can do it the old-fashioned way and call in your question. The number is 61 I love OHD. All right, thank you so much for listening every day. Thank you for listening all the way through. I hope you have a great start to your weekend. Enjoy preseason Major League Baseball if you're into it like me. And I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.